Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Outlanders. We're up to episode 35 I believe and today we're starting things off back at our base because we've got some rather important things that we've got to be doing today. Now as you can see by my inventory I've been eating fish for the last few days and it is not the best diet in the world. For one it only heals I think two and a half hearts. What is, there we go. Two and a half hearts and it's probably not the best. I would rather be eating beef which I don't really have a lot of or pork which I don't really have a lot of and then in a pinch chicken which I do have a fair amount of and mutton which I also have a fair bit of but that all said I really think I should be shoring up my food supplies in such a manner that I can get copious amounts of these two and have a lot of them to go off so that is our plan for today try and get those things into big supply now one thing that I have forgotten over the little while is that there are other types of villages other than my farmer villages which I've got just in the corners and those ones are the butchers they do sell cooked meat at least in the bedrock edition so it's something I'm going to be working on today however before we get started on that we do need to set up a place for the butcher villages to go and that is going to be a tricky part I'm not exactly sure where to put them or how to put them or what color backing they're going to be but that is something that we're going to have to work out. There's another thing that I did think about is if I'm wandering around down here, I can't really tell which one is which, which villagers are selling which without actually having to go down. Because the beds do tell me orange for carrot, for instance, or red for beetroot. But other than that, it's a bit hard to tell. So what I'm thinking is if I change the walkway color and have these middle bits the same color as these things here, that should give me a good indicator. Now I'm going to quickly pop into a survival world to showcase what this looks like. So over here we've got just one example of what we could do. We've got obviously the red one here, the beetroot over here, and I think that looks pretty good. If we're walking down here, we'd instantly be able to tell that yes, this is red and we can do something with it. I did also consider, although this is probably not the best one to do it with, having, I know I did this very early on, but having a red thing over here like so I really should have done this earlier but something like that or a little bit taller to just to ind give a better indicator of what is behind these ones here then again maybe I should swap out these things as well it's all up in the air exactly how I do it and then these ones would have to be changed to that maybe but I'm not particularly fond it's yeah not particularly fond of that I think it's just too much red so if we if we keep it as the spruce ones and do like so yes if we keep it like this it should be fine now over here I trialed the orange one and I'm not haven't yet filled in these ones but you can easily tell orange with the green is just not quite right it just clashes too much I think the color clashes too clashes too much and if I change these ones to yellow you can see that's not much better. The yellow and the and the cyan just don't quite go well together. So I'm going to have to figure out a new color scheme for each of these ones. I kind of get that in there. There we go. And yeah, new color scheme for these ones and also for the new one. With a little bit of experimentation, I think I've come up with the four palettes that I want. I did experiment a little with this one with over here. So I did consider having these the the what do you call these the crimson ones instead of the polished granite but i think this one will work better for a future project which if we use purple we'll get a quick one i'll just quickly stick this in i probably should have done this before actually but if i do purple which will be the clerics when i get those in eventually the uh, this should work very nicely actually i'm very very happy with the way the crimson and the purple mix but that is again a future project Anyway, we've got ourselves the orange over here with the acacia. Moving around here, we've got the yellow with the smooth sandstone, I think this is. And then over here, we went with brown and, of course, dark oak. So those, I think, will work very well together. Just the color palettes between them, and they work very brilliantly. So for the time being, let's hop back into the server and start ripping out our old ones and putting the back the new ones. Okay, a little bit of time has passed and you can see I put in all the slabs, not the slabs, the staircases. I put in all the staircases 
in these straight bits. I haven't dealt with these intersections yet, and I'm going to work out later what happens with them. But uh, you might recall a couple of episodes ago, I built a little bit of a trash machine and put in quite a bit of trash, including brown, orange, red, and yellow concrete. And it just so happens those are the things I need now, which is incredibly, incredibly annoying. So I think what we're going to have to do is figure out exactly how many we need. We need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 2, 18, which is not a number that is very easily made because I believe the concrete you need to make it in groups of 8, and 18 is not a vis number divisible by 8, which is annoying again. So yes, this is going to be a little bit annoying. I'm going to have spare bits left over, but we're just going to have to do it. It's these rare times when I'm grateful I've actually got a bit of a flower farm up here. So I just need to get a couple of these, perhaps more than two, but enough so I can get myself some yellow and then some orange dye. Now, having done that and having made all the concrete, I'm going to have to go and actually harden it because all of this is not solid blocks. All, all the concrete is no solid blocks. So when I remove these warped wart and then put the concrete powder in, it's just going to go straight down to here. So harden it a must and then I'm going to put them in and then move on to the planning of the both the purple ones I think the clerics as well as the more important the butcher ones. I've popped back into creative to test a couple of things and I think for the at least the clerics the purple is going to work quite well the purple and the crimson work quite well with the clerics apron and the way they look. These brewing stands are going to be giving off quite a few particles but that's okay. Coming over to the smokers, I'm not entirely certain grey is the right way to go. Get out of here, cat. But it's probably the best of what I've got. Because if I look at the concrete colours, let's concrete. You can see the mini box there I've got. But we've got white, we've got black, which is a potential. But then again, I don't really have many black sl type slabs. Actually, what I do? Uh, I do have black stone, which could work well. Yes, actually, let's build a second one of these with black stone. Having now built the black one in creative, I'm not entirely happy with it. The black concrete works okay with the, this, but then the gray, the grays of the black stone stairs don't really work for me. Over here, I think the grays look a little bit okay, but there's still the contrast of the brown. But overall, I think the gray works better, and I think that's what I'm going to be building. Now... I have to get back into the survival and try and figure out exactly where I'm going to be building this thing. I actually decided to hop back into creative because I didn't want to have to build it and then dismantle it and build it and dismantle it a few times. So I've been experimenting a little bit and come up with a couple of new plans. So with each of these circles that I'm going to do with each of the farmer villages, I'm going to curve it off like this, so they put in four new villages here, one, two, three, four, and make it a bit, well, not exactly a curve, but two straight lines that are completely closed off. So that will mean that if I, when I'm coming through, I don't have the risk of falling off and, and injuring myself. Then we're going to come along like this, the very next opportunity, and put in just an uh, ended one like this. I'm not sure what the a dead end, like a court, I guess, a dead end circle here, loop here, with just the three segments, which should mean we get 11 villagers in. And that will be the same across all of these ones. So when I get the next set, the clerics, for example, here, and then the, whatchamacallit, the next lot can go along through here, possibly, if there's room, and so on and so forth. So I think that's going to be look a lot better so let's get back into survival and start building it. After a bit of time you can see I've now built in the two or two sides of the smokers there. I decided to go with two lots of 11 instead of 16 or whatever it was earlier partly because I've got 22 smokers and it was just so much easier to do that. So that us, I think we've got this bit done. We're going to have to do the cleric ones, the smoke, not the smokers, the brewing stands later because I need to get a whole lot more of those. But for now, we need to start getting the villagers in. All 16 of these of the villager ones plus 22 of the smoker of the butchers. So that means that is 
16 plus 22, that is 38, if my math is correct. It's actually been quite a while since I've come into the Never on camera, at least, and quite a bit has happened. For one, we have completely leveled this thing, so every single portal is at Y is 78. Now that does present a bit of a problem, and we can see Mirror's base down there. I think this is Robbie's base down there, or uh, Gamer Dude, or as we call him, Waffle. Uh, we've got all the portals at Y is 78. Now, as I was just saying, that does present a bit of a problem, because our, our villager thing is all the way down at Y is 59. Now, I think Gamer, or Waffle, I should say Gamer, already disconnected that portal, so there won't be any villagers. We do have about a dozen or so down here, but that is going to have to be moved. So, I need to, I already have actually worked out where the portal's going to end up, and we're just going to head there now, and here it is. Now, it is going to be somewhere around here, or at least right down here. I think we can see I've, we can see the hole down to where the base is, just there, and I've marked now. What I'm probably going to do is put the portal back a couple of blocks and then have an ice path coming down along here and leading into my portal down that way. So, what I'm going to have to do is do a bit of clearing out as well as portal building. So, time for a short cut and we're going to be back in a few seconds with this fully done. And some t little time later, I've got myself the portal, which does actually link up to my villager farm from earlier. I've got myself an ice boat path, which I, if I use this, we go smashing headfirst into there, should be able to turn around and... Mm, yes, just although I think for what minute the boat was entirely off the ice path, but whatever. That's physics for you, Minecraft physics for you. Yeah, you can see just the ores on, and it's a little bit ridiculous, but whatever. And we can go into here, go into the portal, and of course from there we can get our villager in. So, what we have to do is slowly but surely get 32 or 38 villagers into this portal and into their cages where they're going to live for the rest of their life. It's been almost an hour since I've managed to get the, since the last clip, and I've, all I've managed is two. Just two solitary villagers. I've had so many die, I've had to kill a couple. I've had to breed some more because the villager breeder I've got isn't really the best. And of course I've had to transport them and I lost a couple on the way. It's just really, really annoying. Also for some reason the boat seemed to be a little bit broken. Let's just give an example. I shouldn't be able to push them. And they shouldn't be going off like that. And yet they are. So I've had to build in these walls. Partly so when I release the villagers from their boats they don't go running off. But mostly to contain these boats. It's just been really annoying. It's possibly the same bug that's had our, all our floating boats on the server of late. So not really sure what's going on there, but it is a little bit interesting. <laughs> that would be my luck. Having transported these two villages and unlocked them in this little bit, one of them has turned into a nitwit, which is annoying to say the least. However, this one you can still just grew, which was very lucky, very lucky on camera. Now I just need to push it into its little cage and make sure it turns into a potato villager which might mean breaking this composter and let me see breaking it and repairing it a few times and then I need to get some potatoes which I forgot to do and let's see and yeah make sure it's locked so let's push it in a little bit more lock it in for now kill this guy and hopefully that guy turns into a comp into a into a farmer soon and then we can actually get on the process of doing the rest of this and of course to make sure the villager doesn't unsink from his from its um workstation we put a bucket of water there and that should keep it locked on this composter for the rest of its life it's taken many, many hours, but I've finally got all of these villages in. You can see I've also marked them with what their second trade is. Their second trade down here, which I haven't got most of them to. So these empty ones are going to be the rabbit, which let's just have a look at there. You can see rabbit there. I haven't decided to go with the raw one because I don't think I'm going to be getting much raw meat in the, for the time being anyway, given that I've got a fire sword and a fire bow. But you never know. So what I need to do now is get these guys up to speed. So get a whole stack of that. 
and then start trading in meat. So this should take a while, or well, this will take a while, and I'm going to find myself a lot more room for rabbit stew, which is going to be a bit annoying, but if it's going to get me beef and other meats, it's worth it. While all the meat is slowly working its way through the sorting system, I've just had been talking to Mira, who's just online now, and they very kindly gave me a bat head and a silverfish head, which is very nice of them. I don't think I'd have any either of those yet. Actually, I might have the bat head, but I'm not sure. Just another thing to add to my collection of heads. So let's see, bat head I did not, and silverfish head I did not. So you can see I've got a, quite a lot of heads, and my plan is to try and get most if not all of the heads this season, which would be quite an achievement I reckon. I have also compiled all the rabbits too that I have and it's nine and two thirds of a shulker, you can see there, nine and two thirds of a shulker shulkers, so that is a lot and I am seriously considering actually opening a food shop, Mira actually did suggest it earlier somewhere, not sure where, she, where they said it, but yeah, that is definitely something I'm thinking of doing with all the food that I have. It's definitely worth some worth doing, I reckon. Even if it doesn't make much profit, it'll make something, and, and I can get the stuff pretty much for free anyway. Well, talking with Mirror, I've decided to just throw all this rabbit stew into a bin. It is, it is really, really not useful. It's not something I can cart around easily, and yeah, it'll just be better tossed into the rubbish. So I'm going to head over to their base now and should be able to dump, what is it, 27 times 9, whatever that is, 250, 243, 53, 43, something like that, and then another 10 or 12 or something like that. It's a lot. So where, what are all these things over here? Someone's been building things and it is not, does not look good and I do not have a, I do not have my thing above my I do not have my trident on me that's a little bit annoying okay let's fly over here and see what these things are before we finish off there's a few touch-ups I want to do with this base and most of those just involve making there to be an emerald storage place which you can see I've put the emeralds in there I also want to make this bit just a little bit better so make it this thing a little bit more closed off so if we do that we can now sleep in that section and we need to do the same across. I also do want to put something like this. I'm not sure if I should put a granite stairs which actually would fit, it wouldn't fit the rest of the pattern there or if we put in some, what is this, the spruce wood stairs. I think this one would do better. Then over here we'll put in some glass. So I think that would do quite well. And a little more decoration later, we've got ourselves a very reasonably looking trading hall area. So I do have quite a bit more stuff to do. I do want to make this thing with a bit more of a ceiling and possibly these later bits as well. But that's going to have to come in next week's episode. For the time being, I am going to be working on getting these things... Well, they're already up to scratch, but I'm going to be getting a lot more food and potentially starting a food shop in the next episode or two. But that's going to bring today's episode to an end, so thank you very much for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye!